in the year's 1879, but the history's not our own. Everything changed on July 3rd, 1863, during the Battle of Gettysburg. The dead rose up, the shadows darkened, and a reckoning had begun. Humanity's worst nightmares now walked the waking world. Everything seemed to be headed to hell in a handbasket. Humanity, however, was more resilient than the terrors expected. A secret war began between the darkness and those who would stand against it. A few sturdy folks from all walks of life, from school moms to nuns, from snake oil salesmen to steadfast soldiers and children to old coots, have risen up to stand between their fellow humans and creatures born in the very pits of hell. Some were fated to fall, but others stood firm. For the next hour or so, sit back and listen to the stories of horror and heroism, recounting of the sacrifices these unsung heroes have made. Enjoy these tales from the Deadlands. Be warned, however, these tales are not for the faint of heart. Hello, and welcome back to the Knights of the Smith Dinner Table actual play production of Deadlands, the Weird West, Tales from the Deadlands. So, last time... The posse managed to go an entire session without a single shot being fired. I was kind of proud of them. Because I kept Daisy occupied in the wagon. <laughs> um, Daisy kept you <clears throat> occupied in the wagon. That's absolutely correct. I mean, both of you are correct, so. But um, they had traveled north to Shanfan looking for one Captain Roderick Pennington Smythe. And having failed to find him, they met a Mr. Dillinger. Um, Mr. Oh, my brain is just shut down. Rutherford Ellington Dillinger. Dillinger, sorry. And after talking with him, they have learned that Captain Smythe has been taken uh, when he went out to dispose of an artifact. And all they know is that the only information that is available is from one Thin Noodles Mall. I think it was Thin Noodles Mall. It might have been uh, Big Ears Tam. Me and my brain today have not been getting along. Let's see. We're in the chapter called Big Trouble and Little Shan Fan. And it was Big Ears Tam. Big Ears. Um, he has offered to pay your entry fees into the Explorer Society, and he has offered each of you a room up in this section where his guardsmen uh, are currently keeping an eye on things and not letting any strangers near. <clears throat> now, on top of this... Thanks to the quick thinking of Goodman, you guys now have an extra. And that extra's name, he happened to be the ugliest guy, but he was the most patient one according to, to Mr. Dillinger. And his name was Edmund Anders. And for those of you who are watching at home, this is what he looks like. Ooh, ah. Right? So he stands about six feet tall. He's he's kind of brawny. He's got a scarred up face. He's got that beard only thing going on where he doesn't have a mustache. And he's wearing a derby hat with semi-long black hair. Cowboy boots, duster, jeans, the typical affair. Plus a uh, mare's leg shotgun and a Winchester 76 slung on his back. Um, I don't like him. Why? Because he's ugly? He scares me. I mean, a good guard scares people away. So you guys were retreating to your room, rooms, to discuss your plan. And that is where we shall pick up. Please, discuss away. All right, well, I've got the wagon put up. That's great. I didn't realize there was an underground garage. So what happened? So 
I, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I have no idea how we got to this point. <laughs> I'm like so thoroughly lost, and this is such a like a, like egg on my face moment of like I have no fucking idea what we are doing right now. <laughs> we are in Little Chinatown. We are in the Lantern District. Yes. Like we had to go to the Lantern District. Like yes. I remember that, but like the actual purpose of us being <clears throat> here, there was like a house that burned down. Like I'm I'm still trying to follow the threads as to like who we're supposed to be talking to so I can actually have this discussion. The Explos a game. I remember. We met with the Explorers League guy. Pennington Smythe got... Yep, Dillinger. Pennington Smythe got kidnapped, and he wants us to go handle the triads to get him back. And you agreed to it as long as we got the guard. Because it was you, uh, Cole, and Dr. Tilly that were there, because me and Daisy were sitting down in the wagon. Right. Okay. I don't even remember negotiating for that, so I'm stoked on that. Um... <laughs> I, I'm genuinely like I have no idea. What, like I'm trying to remember when I even said that. Uh, it was like right before we finished up the episode last time. God, I must have been falling asleep. You and were very tired. <clears throat> I was exhausted. I like that's the unfortunate part about Sundays. Uh, I am up incredibly early. <laughs> Uh, so as as soon as the I start hitting a wall, things just start kind of going. So I clearly. Me, like, let's be honest, my ability to autopilot role playing, <laughs> I'm confused <laughs> by my plan, but there was a plan. <laughs> um, okay, so Pennington Smythe, he got captured by triads. We got to go find him. Um, Indeed. And at this point, um, I'm sorry to say, Pam was not able to join us tonight. So she will volunteer to stay behind and kind of guard uh, Dillinger sure our doctor stays safe and sound indeed <clears throat> okay so pennington smythe and then he is looking so he's taken by the triad so the last right. place that where do we know the last place that he was like where, where was the last place he was supposed to be dillinger was not sure he was heading outside of town to dispose of the artifact did he mention whether it was a compass point north south east or west uh as far as he knows to the north Okay, so but he know does know that Big Ears Tam's men now have a hold of uh, Dillinger. And Big Ears Tam, uh, I just realized I should probably remind you, Big Ears Tam is the leader of the triad here in Shane yeah. Van. Yep. And they want this artifact because it can do something with the dead, if I remember correctly. It can bring those who were of the most black heartedness back to life yep. as undead. Range. Okay. Well. All right. Well, should we go talk to the triad or just go in guns a blazing? I mean. Uh, would I be able to make a roll, um, common knowledge on like how one would go about having a discussion with people or whether that's even something that's done? Cause like this world's a little weird enough that like, I don't know if you just go and talk to people from the triad. So I will let you make a common knowledge roll at a minus four, just because you were not familiar with the way the triads work being from Sorry. farther east. Okay. Um, Modifiers are better rolls. We we're doing it. You said a minus four. Correct. And have it twice. All right. So right now you've got a total of a one, which is a failure. That's you okay. Can Benny that if you wish? No. Um. So I'm gonna say I don't know too much about triads or traditions, but I know that if we're going to push our luck. We gonna want to make sure we're pushing it on the right ships now i don't think that going to them and asking politely for them to return mr pennington smythe um i think that what would probably be in our best interest is to acquire acquire leverage so we go get the artifact and keep it for ourselves and effectively say return them or we destroy it or do whatever we have to do what we have to do to get them back but if they we don't have any bargaining power they can just say 
whatever they want. They can set terms. We want to make our own, and I do not want to leave this up to the hands of people who are considered a triad. Well, from what I know, tri means three. So there's got to be three of them. Well, big ears Tam sure as hell's one. Would I know a little bit more about how the triad app writes, since this is kind of my jurisdiction and area? Uh, I will let you do a straight-up common knowledge roll, since you have your Bible with you. Um, that'll cancel out the minus two. Perfect. <clears throat> if it'll actually roll. It rolled, but it hasn't posted yeah, the results. It's mapping. I saw a five. I did, too. I saw a three. Five and a three. All right, so we'll go with what I saw since it's not doing the math for you, and I'm not sure why. <clears throat> so what you know, Cole, is that they are basically one big gang, kind of like the old uh, gangs back in New York in this time period. Only these guys make the violence in New York and Boston and places like that seem like child's play. They are vicious, they are vindictive, and they always play for keeps. Even a minor slight could be a death sentence or worse. All right, so I'm going to mention the Goodman as like, uh, only leverage we're probably going to be able to get <coughs> is maybe a little bit of firepower. Because they don't take kindly to anything against them. Well, they sure as shit shouldn't be taking kindly to people like Hellstrom doing what he is doing. And I think that if we come to them with the right leverage, with the right argument, obviously we're not going to show up with a sledge and attempt to open a window. We are going to jimmy that very gently, friend. So what you're proposing is that we request an audience and try to recruit them against Hellstrom? I don't see any problem with recruiting people who may be of nefarious intent to punch below the belt for me. Sometimes people need to be made example. I believe Hellstrom is that such a person. And if we can get three people, man, triad's looking good already. How does that get us to Pennington Smythe, though? Pennington Smythe, we need the leverage to get the actual audience. We need to talk to them and get him back. But I believe that if we can prove ourselves as more of an asset than a detriment, that they'd be more inclined to work with us than to try and stop us. However, they have seen what Hellstrom's capable of. The man nuked a small... Oh, well, it, that's not even a word at this point. Nobody, nobody here knows what Hellstrom did, though. Man tore apart a whole neighborhood. You think that they don't have some kind of connections that might have gotten them that information? Well, considering the welcome we got, they don't really treat with outsiders too well here in Shanfan. Um, and we were the only ones coming from the south up north, and they seemed very surprised that we came from Grimm's locale. Well, I think that if we can, in some capacity, cause them to have a falling out with Hellstrom that might exacerbate some of his issues which might make a few of ours less prominent so enemy of my enemy is my friend um, I don't think they're with Hellstrom here aren't they more um, iron iron uh, iron no that's not the name empire rail iron dragon iron dragon rail yeah, they're not with Hellstrom, they're against him. That's the point. We're, the, the ideas were saying that, like, we're gonna effectively get enough something to make us worth talking to by the triad. Talk to, try and get a, an audience with this big ears tan. I got it. I got it. We tell them about the Underground Railroad. Yep. Sure. I got this. Throw Hellstrom on the bridge. And how Hellstrom just took out Grimm. And he's coming north next. I do still think it might not be a bad idea or a terrible idea to make sure that we have secured the artifact prior to 
discussing this. Absolutely. I think, I, I think the artifact I, would be much better in our hands. Well, we than buried are, somewhere where other people can find it. We are looking to weaponize an evil son of a bitch against an evil son of a bitch. I mean, we're, we're fighting on all fronts here, according to this Explorers League, so... Well, it's a fight I've been picking, and if I'm going to find out what I need to know, there's going to have to be some blood spilled, which is a damn shame, but... It's the way of the West. Yeah, maybe I should have went south. <laughs> uh, it cost us those tasty meals, you buggery bastard. Maybe I should have never came back from France. Oh, now you're just talking crazy. Have a drink. So, generalized game plan sounds like get in good with the triad, tell them about the Underground Railroad, use that as leverage. Now, I did a lot of, like, talking assertively. If there's any part of that plan you guys think should be changed or modified, please let's discuss it out of character. Because, uh, obviously... Oh, we're, we're, Goodman's, we're... Yeah, like, it, Goodman's very passionate about this, but, like, I don't want this to be a thing where, like, it's just, like, a, this is the plan and we're doing it. It's like... No. no, Charles is definitely on the same page because, I mean, that artifact sounds awfully nifty to get my hands on be a cool story to tell that's kind of part of it too is like we're helping people we get a cool story to talk about this is like the hero's tale right the bard's tale i'm living it let's do it right <laughs> let's so uh... all right how do we get a meeting with tam and what what sort of feats do we need to do to get his attention on a good way not a i'm going to stab you in your sleep way i mean I believe having something that would be interesting for them to, like, something they would want. Offer them something that is worth more than our lives to take them. So we gotta go find where that artifact is first. I think that that might be the solution. And you guys have no clue where it could be. Northbound. North. Shanfan what? is still a few hundred miles from the California border. And then you also have Oregon and Washington. So big north. Well, how long? <laughs> it's a did, how long did he, was he gone to hide he, this artifact? Uh, Dillinger told you that he disappeared shortly after the fire, which was about a week ago. So traveled a week. Well, he got snagged. Where did he get snagged? Nobody knows. Okay, so maybe we need to do something local to get the triad's attention, and then we find where the artifact is from Pennington Smythe. Because, yeah, that's that's a lot of land. I mean, just a general north for seven days, that could have gotten all the way up to Gamora. Could have gotten, if he hopped the train, could have gotten to Sacramento, could be Fort Lincoln. Yes, I have the map pulled up. <laughs> Art man might have used it as a misdirection. Gone north initially, leaving town, headed south after. Right. So, all right, let's let's Operation Triad attention. I think we should just like walk up and like just say, "Hey, do you know this is coming?" Now, it is interesting that you suggest this because this is where drinking is often a fun experience. You go and you talk to people. It's unfortunate here in Chan Fan, people, especially in the Lantern District, people are a little bit closed-lipped, but I believe we <laughs> might be able to convince some people that there might be some dangers coming this way, which, understandably, will attract the right attention, or the wrong attention, so to speak. So above board, we're going to increase the fear level intentionally? <laughs> no. <laughs> We are that made, delicate about this. That's why that we're not going to go and talk to children and bend I mean, down on our knees and going, listen, little girly, there's a bomb coming your way to melt your skin right from your bones. That, I mean, that'll probably happen when I crit fail my tail telling. Relax. <laughs> but... <laughs> Relax. Don't say that, dude. Come on. I, I, have you seen the way my dice roll sometimes? I do. I do. I've, I've <laughs> been on the 
runs into that at some point. Um, but yeah, no, I think that like if we if we basically just try and like getting the triad's attention might not be a bad idea. Um, but I think that basically letting them know that like their feud with the Adventurers Guild is literally like chump change, and that they're going to want to like be as united as possible when Hellstrom gets here. Ooh, you know what we need? Croissants. We get the stuff. I make some croissants. And we start, like, getting the, the people behind us. If we could get the people behind us, then the triads are going to want to take notice of who we are. Now, and, it would be interesting, Mr. Charles, if you would be able to take those croissants with that gorgeous French cuisine and give it a oriental spin, so to speak. What? Huh? Change the recipe so that <laughs> out of out of character for a second. Oh no, I knew what you mean out of oh, character. Okay, cool, cool. I, I just wanted to make sure we were still going on with this. Like that was like a very ha. Huh. Um like you take something that is traditionally cooked somewhere like Japan. It's triad, so probably China. A Chinese dish that uses a pastry. Use a croissant to make that food. Do so you uh, want him to put rice into a croissant? I don't... I've never had... I've never been to China. Look around, Charles. There's inspiration around every corner. We you got know food for days isn't. here. Around every corner. I know they don't. They were staring at my horses like they hadn't seen meat in a week. Okay, you are right about that. The other problem is, is we're lacking the sundries needed to do any sort of massive cooking. So, and you just remind. So that's when the light bulb goes off, of like, there's hungry people here. We should go get food. <laughs> right, but we lack the funds to do that. Let's just go fucking rob a train <laughs> for the greater good. Now hold on here. Hold on here. There are a little bit more. Uh legal ways to procure some fun absolutely um, maybe a couple but, hands of cards uh in character for sure like i definitely believe that we should i believe that could be very good do you consider yourself a good hand at cards mr cole what you see here i'm not that great at cards to be honest i see. haven't played much but it always seems that I don't know when to stop pushing my luck and I turn around and lose it all. You are winning my uh, my confidence, Mr. Cole, in your gambling abilities. Is our, um, is our new uh, friend here with us? Yeah, he's just standing off to the side watching. Hey, Anders. Uh, Anders, how do you make money around here? Um... I work for the uh, Explorer Society as a guard. R right. I meant, like, in general. Like, what? Wait, we're members of the Explorer Society. Lacey told us so. How do we requisition supplies? Well, since the fire, that's been kind of difficult. Uh, Mr. Dillinger's been paying for everything out of pocket. And everything here is pretty, pretty expensive. But, uh, why don't you just go and ask Ma to, or not Ma, Tam to see you? That's, that's that, it can be that easy? Um, it can. I mean, the worst he can say is no, right? I mean, well, the that's... worst he can say is no and then put a knife in our throats. No, we'll just introduce him to Daisy in that case. That is a probably the worst proposition you have made this evening, Chuck. <laughs> I think it's the best idea. Somebody's gonna put a knife to my throat. I'm calling in Daisy. That's that's pretty fair. <laughs> Absolutely. Just like... You're All right, well, the kid in a room with a triad leader? I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> like... 
either because he's gonna enjoy her company or something bad is gonna happen. Like there's some like cataclysmic thing. There's just like that clairvoyant moment of like, as soon as those two elements are in the same room together, there's going to be a cataclysmic explosion of some degree. And I'm not sure what it's going to be, whether it be spiritual or physical energy, but holy shit, is it going to blow us off our goddamn feet? I'm here for it. Uh, do you know how to get in touch with Tam Anders? Uh, yeah, you you just head up to his palace. Oh, well, you know, we should have asked the local first. We're making things, we're making mountains out of molehills. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, yeah, right, I've then. been sitting here for the past, let's see, how long has it been? Because I looked when you guys started, 15 minutes listening to you guys. <laughs> now, nobody wants thought to say, you. hey, did he come in with us? If you cut the bit about me being like, I have n honestly no fucking clue what happened last week. That was literally me getting everything back. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's go to Tam's palace. Does he like being called Big Ears, by the way? Uh, that's his name. Big Ears Tam. His mother named him Big. OK, well, uh, I don't know. It's I think that's a cultural shut the hell up moment. <laughs> it's it's a uh, it seems to be a Chinaman thing. Huh. Yeah. If anything, I could see what they're making. All right, let's do this. All right. Cole, you with us? Let's do it. Yeah, making me nervous. I just got to keep that information about the Underground Railroad close to our heart and use it as an ace in the hole, so to speak. Right. Ace in the hole. Yeah, because if we can, because that's the thing. Even if we can mobilize Tam to go and do some shit against Hellstrom, because Hellstrom's whole thing is probably either it, it can't be good, whatever it is. That, that's a power imbalance, is what that is. Him being on the other side of these mountains. So I think that that might be a. Uh, if anything, Tam coming after us with the freaking people on the the train, that probably says more to how they feel about Hellstrom than anything. I think those were just Iron Dragon railroad workers and not necessarily Triad members. I can't tell if I'm racist in the scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. All right. To the Palace of Tam. <laughs> Star right. White to the Palace of Tam. <laughs> so, uh, Anders, Goodman, Charles, Cole, you guys are all heading out? Is Daisy coming with us? We should probably bring Daisy with us. We're not going to leave her alone with the like, well, Doc Tilly's sticking behind. It's true, um, but Doc Tilly also needs some peace and quiet, too. <laughs> when when you guys turn around to ask her, she's not in the room. You know she came in with you. She's probably trying to find some kids to play with. All right, let's go. <laughs> All um, right. I'm not the largest fan of how much free reign this child is allowed to have on their own personal existence. <laughs> I'm take not going to take a swig out of the freaking flask. <laughs> I'm not going to tell her no. And, I... that is, and that has been a problem since day one. Uh, I did not cause that problem. I'm just trying to deal my best with that problem. We came in day 385, it's fine. All right, so you guys make your way downstairs with Anders kind of pointing out the directions you need to go. And as you head out front, you see Daisy attempting to teach a bunch of Chinese children how to play hopscotch. gave her chalk <laughs> uh, no chalk it just took a stick and carved the boxes into the dirt well, as long as it was a stick and not her <laughs> knife well you're not sure but there is a big stick lying close by uh daisy we're gonna go see a mob boss uh, if you want to come with us you can or if you want to stay here and play with your new friends however you want to do it Will I get to use my knife? Uh, only if he uses his first. I'll go. 
<laughs> what about my gun? Again, only if they go first. They're they're not uh, the friendliest of people, so we don't want to antagonize them. But I tell you what, if anybody threatens me, you are more than allowed to shoot them. You need my protection. I'll go. Oh, of course I do. <laughs> Give her a little head ruffle. All right. So it takes you guys about a half an hour of pushing your way through the very busy streets. And once again, the thing that seems to hang over this town, and as a matter of fact, everywhere you've been in California so far, is just Everybody looks like they're about four days behind on their food. But after that half hour, you come upon this absolutely ostentatious Asian palace. Yeah, I kept looking for like food vendors and like people selling stuff and they just apparently not much. Can't get um, a good gauge of their cuisine if I can't sample it. So... To give you an idea uh, of the type of building you're looking at, it's very large and the roofs, rather than like being a straight roof, like what we would have here in the US, they kind of go up to a peak and then arc downwards. And it's pretty, it's pretty traditional, like yeah, very, temple, yeah. very traditional Chinese buildings. And they're very open and airy looking. Now, this one does have a wall surrounding it. And as you guys approach the gate, you see two large, for all you know, Chinese men step in between you and the gates. And one of them speaks rapid firedly in a language that none of you understand. Uh, I reply in French. And as you're replying in French, Anders begins speaking, albeit much more slowly, in what sounds like the same language. Oh, sweet shit. Good pickup. It, it was sometimes, a good you just gotta, sometimes you just gotta talk. <clears throat> they go back and forth for a few minutes. And then, finally, the other guard, the one that hadn't said anything yet, turns around, walks in the gate, and Anders looks at you guys and says, they want us to wait here a minute. That's fair. Ooh, good grief. <clears throat> None of y'all speak about. Mandarin. We're uh, not local. Uh, <laughs> no, I speak French and I speak English. That's I about it. I speak French too. Mm. Murder. Do you know that one? Ander Anders, this is... Uh, Murder. Mm. Murder. But we're, we're working on that. Murder. <laughs> Might get it one day. Is... Um, he just kind of raises an eyebrow, and as he does, the scar over his left eye really stands out for a moment. And he says, Well, I recommend. Trust me, you... uh, uh, one or two of y'all learning how to speak it if you can. Can you teach me something? I I can teach a little bit. I'll be much interested in learning that Mandarin. Um, Very believe, interested in learning languages. You probably I've got a little more from his, uh, his body language than anything, young one. I does does Tam speak English? I would be quiet than I've ever heard in my life. Uh, <laughs> I believe he does, but... Will he choose to speak it? I don't know. Well, I mean, if he's going to want to listen to what we have to say, let's hope he decides to be a bit magnanimous about that. Well, oh, pardon me. After about ten minutes, the guard comes back out, opens the gate, and says in very accented English, Ah, Tam says he see you now. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Follow. And, uh, and we will. as you guys are being led through a very beautiful garden, very well kept, um, where he's getting the water for keeping this garden, you're not sure. And honestly, Cole, you know that you probably don't want to know. 
Yep. But uh, you're a lot of people who are crying in the town, literally just down the stairs. Like it's probably their tears, dude. <laughs> Um, you're led inside the building and the first thing you notice is the walls everywhere are paper. Oh, so the, the palace is just a showy thing and not really all that rich. Um, I mean, it looks beautiful, like nothing you've ever seen before. <clears throat> oh, it's pretty but... paper, fancy paper. There's artwork everywhere. I mean, clearly, this Big Ears Tam does not have an issue with money. Oh, okay. So it's fancy paper. And you guys are led to a small office. And sitting behind the desk is an older Chinese gentleman. And he's got those little round spectacles that he's wearing. Uh, some lines on his face definitely showing that he is a little older, but no gray is in his hair at all. It's still jet black. And his ears are normal sized. And as you guys enter, he says, Ah, welcome. I am Big Ears Tam. I understand you wish to speak with me. Yeah. We're... we're looking for some information about uh, uh, somebody we were sent here to meet. We were told you might have the, the, the details we're looking for. Ah, please, sit. And he motions to some uh, mats that are on the other side of the desk, and that's when you realize he's sitting down on his knees. Um, I'll attempt to do the same, uh, only to realize that I would my boots have spurs? I think they would, would they? I mean, they might, but you could uh, remove some really horse. I don't really ride horseback, so probably not. So that would probably be like a whole thing. Oh, I, might, I might have some, but like to ride horses. But like we've been in a carriage for so long. It's not yeah. really like... Spurs are real easy to put on and take off. They literally just kind of clip onto your ankles. I just imagine like accidentally <clears throat> like down on your haunches and getting an ass full of freaking spur like damn bro <laughs> not not a pleasant thought process of just like oh no um luke Notman never wore cowboy boots um the good news is is contrary to popular belief most spurs are not sharp yeah no they're just supposed to like dig in right like they're, yeah they're, they're oh. supposed to be uncomfortable but not damaging because well, yeah. where you where you kick the horse with your spurs it, there's a whole bunch of really important muscles, so you don't want to damage those when you're spurring the horse. Yeah, exactly. It, it's, it's like triggering the, a... Horse lesson. Yes. I know a Sick thing or two about horse. Equestrian moments! Bin, bin, bin. <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> Deadlands in Equestria. Oh, wait. Wrong game. That is... Oh, no. Don't don't take it to Equestria. Just Equestrianism, please. Just the horses. <laughs> I'm already upset about the horses. <laughs> And instead of sitting on my knees like everyone else, I'm going to kind of sit, um, well, it's the times, Indian style. Hmm. What kind of mats are they? Uh, they appear to be made of some kind of, like, shiny, crunchy material. So not, like, comfy? Um, not super comfy. You think sitting on your knees you'd be okay, but if you had to sit for very long... Can I just yep, pop a squat on the floor yeah. next to Chuck? I'm going to do my best to mimic the way Tam's sitting. Okay. Um, and once everybody is sitting, he's like, well, so uh, what bring you to me? What particular well, thing do you want? We were told you had a friend of ours who goes by the name of uh, Pennington Smythe. Ah, the captain of the Explorer Society. Yes, yes. Yeah, I do not have him. Oh. Well, somebody must be mistaken then. Do you happen to know where he is? I believe one of my lieutenants took him. Uh, one oh. Thin Noodles Maw, 
I guess they had a disagreement or something. Um, but, uh, I mean, I'm sure that he had a good reason to take him. Well, I gotta, like, uh, we were sent by Lacey O'Malley. He to... seems to think for a moment, he goes, oh, Tombstone Epitaph. Yes, the reporter, good friend of ours. Uh, he was with us down in, um, what's the name of that place? Uh, Lost Angels. Uh, and yes. So that's where we came from. I, I heard what happened in Lost Angels. Oh, what'd you hear? I heard that Hellstrom won the Great War Rail Wars by blowing everybody up. That is true. He also dug railroads underneath the ground to get there. Hmm. I was wondering how he got past the Iron Dragon. Yeah. Uh, I am sure that Kang is very angry. I have no idea who that is, but I know there was this lady in a velocicopter type thing that tried to kill me. He and thinks I think they were all Iron and Dragon. And he says, did she have Scar over left eye? I didn't get a good look at her because it blew up. Oh, okay. Then it, it probably not her then. Yeah, I, I don't know. We fought. They, they jumped on the train that we were on because we fell into the hole and Hellstrom gave us a ride and then we went to Lost Angels and Grim was killing people. Uh, Grim has and, always killed people. Yeah, and but the people who live just there. Don't pay attention. Well, I'd never been there before. I'm from out east, actually. Uh, out east than France, then out east. I'm a chef, actually. Ah. By the way, just pop that into the chat so everybody knows exactly why I'm doing this. <laughs> but yeah, so we were sent by O'Malley to join the Six Borders League because he said there's, like, evil in the world and we're supposed to stop it and whatnot. Oh. Huh. Stop talking. Why? It's kind of like the rest of us just sort of turn and look at him. I would assume. <laughs> like. Close to the chest. You call that close to the chest. I mean, we're, we're close. I thought we were all friends here, right, Tim? Most certainly. See? Please tell me more. Mr. Well, in that case, I'm going to tell him exactly what we did about the whole thing. Like, <laughs> the, the adventure. I'm telltale now. Now, Mr. Uh, Tam, I believe you are taking a bit of an advantage on your hospitality with my friend's fast-moving gums. Oh, this is good. I've been wanting to tell this story. So there it was, riding a train, and I should have taken the Wasatch. You know what? I'm going to see if I can't get Chase a little bit higher on that. Oh, so the there first result on the tail tailing was five. Then he followed up with an eight. So basically just my perspective on everything that went down. Like just from when our train crashed to Hellstrom dropping the bomb and Grim, and I'm like, that that's two big baddies fighting themselves. <clears throat> so we moved north. And there's no... There, I have not found a single thing to cook in this entire time. Um, that that would be very true. Food is scarce here in California. Um, many of my folks tend to have roof rabbit, I believe is what they call it. Roof what's, rabbit? What's that? Ah. Uh, if you don't know what it is, then I, I'm not going to ruin the surprise for you. Um, but you are here searching for Pennington Smythe because you wish to join his his special club. Yep, that's what we were told to do. Ah, that's primarily to stop Hellstrom because he's probably setting his sights this direction next. Hmm. I mean, 
we have no major rail stations here. Uh, no, but the railway no, does go north. Right. But I shall, I shall increase the town guard. Yes, yes, and and we shall keep an eye out for him and strike him first before he gets to us. But beyond that, um, and that's when a small old Chinese woman kind of shuffles in, hands him a rolled up uh, piece of parchment. It's much too thick to be paper. And then she shuffles her way back out and he unrolls it and says, pardon me, pardon me. Looks at it for a moment. He says, ah, now I, I do know where Pennington Smythe is now. And I am oh, excellent. more than happy to help you with that, but I need your wood. Okay. Now, if, hold on one second. I would well, like to hear the terms of an arrangement before I give my word on anything. Right. My okay had a question mark at the end. I was waiting to hear the terms myself. So, I am in need of... Hmm, what is the... Uh, the Yankee word? Uh, oh, troubleshooters who are not directly tied to me. I give you this... And when I need a favor, I call you. You come and help me with favor. I, I mean, typically, when. Oh, go ahead. I promise you, it will be nothing against your governments, nothing against any of your organizations. It will only be against other triads. Oh, whenever there's trouble, we typically start shooting, so that sounds like a fair deal. What about the rest of you? Charles See? just spilled our entire fucking, like, existence to this guy, and... <sighs> Fuck. So you Wait want us for that to... hindrance to come into play. Mm -hmm. You want this us to... Going. I'm going to, because this will come to bite you later. I'm going to give Charles a Benny for that. So you want us to interfere in the affairs of inner turmoil in your organization, is what it sounds like? Ah, you are very perceptive. Yes, but only at my direction. I wish to use you as a scalpel, not a bludgeon. If we're going to agree to this, I would ask that there be some kind of discussion of some kind of okay am i gonna use this word wrong let's see armistice i think that's the right word between my people and you that would be correct well our our people the adventurers guild you leave them be the explorers ah, league. The yeah. explorer society league. thank you um Definitely wrote that down wrong. Um, the Explorer Society, we leave them off the table. They don't get touched because they're not here to do any harm to people. They're here to help people. And anyone having an issue with them is probably doing something a little nefarious. I understand. I can speak for me and those who directly serve me. You will not have trouble from my triad. If we hear anything about food, trying to get some here, we'll make sure that Chuck can open his wagon for at least one night before we head on. Ah, you, you. The one, the one thing he didn't say was that he's a chef. I actually did say that I was a chef. Oh, did, did you? I, I remember yeah. you said you were cooking something, but I don't, you, I don't know if you would have mentioned like the cart. But I guess you did say like you're going full on like telltale with it. So, like, uh huh. The adventures of me and my cart. The story Pretty much. of Charles Wagner and his wagon. <laughs> you guys were all secondary characters in this. Fine with that. There's been a lot of fucking sketchy shit going on. <laughs> so, I, I, I've not really gotten to play with rice. How's, how's that work? Do you have a chef? Yes. Yes. When all this is done, can I, like, 
work with them? I see no reason why not. He can teach you how to make many traditional Chinese meals. But I could teach him how to cook French stuff. Very well. We'll get that. We'll get that. uh, Sounds like a deal to me. And I'm just going to shake his hand. This armistice sounds better and better already. To think we were worried about coming here in any capacity. (laughs) Mentally, like, oh, damn. Like, we were literally thinking about having to go get leverage on this guy. And he was literally just like, oh, just be, be, be chill. Oh, okay. You ever see those movies where the moron makes friends with the mob boss and then ends up killing him in the end? That's what I just did. Yeah, you did. And I mean, I can't say you're wrong. Here's so this is like the the so there is a lead up to this, and this is why I'm not doing too much to like play down what Chuck is doing, because this is playing on all of my shit too. I am both reliable and loyal. I am a trouble magnet, and I am vengeful. (laughs) Bad shit happens all the time. You running your mouth is just one more fucking thing on the pile, but I'm still your friend, and I've still got your back, and if someone puts a bullet in you, I'm gonna ventilate that motherfucker. Nobody, nothing bad's happened. We got, we got a new friend in Big Ear Tam. We're getting Pennington Smythe back from... I've seen plenty of new friends ventilate each other over something as, uh, like, smaller than a couple of bucks. (laughs) I have been in the bar business. I have seen friends kill each other for less. It is ridiculous. I think, I think Cole was a bit uh, dramatic when his, with his assessment of the triads. I think you ain't seen enough bad people. I think Cole hasn't. is still waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, it's like, yep. I don't think you've seen enough <laughs> shit people. Because <laughs> like this is obviously going to be like a post thing of like after we've left. It's just like, I don't know if you've seen evil, but... Hellstrom was one, and we just met two. And we know that there's at least two more in a triad. We got four evil motherfuckers running around, doing their thing, and living their lives nicely and, and comfortably. Grim, Grim's also up there, so... Like, did I ever even meet Grim? Like, I don't no, know we just knew answer. of him. So you guys I assume, saw I assume him Grim from a like distance. A yeah. We saw him from oh. a distance and then saw his people just murk their own citizens and throw them into a wagon. He was the one that fucking Hellstrom was fighting when we first got here, yeah? Yes. Got it. And I was like, I don't know if we're on the right side of this. And you guys were like, I don't know. And then he dropped a fucking bomb on a neighborhood. It's like, oh, no, 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 confirmed. He is the evil side of this. Great. All right. The worst <laughs> of two shitholes. <laughs> Damn, it, bro. In that fight, it was a... Uh... A lesser of two evils was get the fuck out of there. Yeah, bounce. Just. D- 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 but yeah, so he gives us the information on where to find long noodles. Is that what yes. the dude's he, name he was? He looks at you as he unrolls a scroll again and says, uh, "Your friend is is being kept at a safe house of thin noodle maws in the skids. It is on Crooked Dog Street." You'll know it because there will be several of Ma's guardians waiting outside. Now, are they going to be... Go ahead. Sorry. Not very subtle. Not very subtle. Are they going to be amicable to us just walking up there? Or is this one of those situations where... I mean, if Ma's men cannot handle a bunch of tin horns like yourself, then maybe he shouldn't have those men. Okay, Daisy looks like you're going to get to use your knife after all today. Daisy just grins. Well then, if our (laughs) business is concluded, then please, see yourselves out. I have much business to handle. I'll definitely be back to uh, parlay with your chef. And with that, that same guard leads you guys back out. And I'm going to give a slight bow to uh, Big Ears before I leave. Like, I'm going to stand up and kind of, like, brush myself off a little bit and then kind of give him a slight bow before we leave. He looks, for half a second, he looks surprised. And uh, he returns the bow. And once you guys are outside... Anders says, so, um, the skids, huh? Yep. 
I know. And I completely missed that whole bow thing. My as my mind was going out, I'm like, okay, there's something about that Tam I don't quite trust. The murderous child didn't set him on ease. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think you've seen the face of evil yet, Chuck. I don't think you have come around to the realization that evil some bitches are in front of you on a daily basis. <laughs> Critic? Not that oh, bad. Oh no, bruh! <laughs> did you just see his critical failure on the? I did. Check? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that was me trying to like notice the interaction between Cole and Tam, and my whole thought process was he didn't react to Daisy's crazy smile, and I'm just in my head going like, okay, maybe I don't trust this guy. Good. Trust no one except God. And once we get out of earshot, I'm going to kind of look over at Charles and be like, what was that? What? He seemed, he was a nice guy. Oblivious that he did anything wrong. Everyone appears nice when you have something that they want. Did, did we not get what we came for? Not yet. Not at the price and now, we for it. And now we're indebted <laughs> to them. I don't see this playing out well for us. All they said we had to troubleshoot some interpersonal relations. It's not going to mess with the Explorers League. It's not going to go against the country. It's not going to go against any of our friends. They want to murder a bunch of people because they told us to. That's not very good to me. Well, I mean, let's see. You were with Hellstrom, who murdered a bunch of people because they told him to. Murdered a bunch of animals that were just trying to live. Murdered uh, Iron Dragon rail workers because we were encroaching upon what they perceived as their territory. So I mean, they tried to murder us first. We don't know that. They just jumped on the train and we started shooting. Chuck, I'll remind you that I decided to pull your starry ass back onto the train when I could have been shooting. Right, and I appreciate that, but I'm just saying, like, they they could have been, like, coming to parlay, and we thought there was an attack, because they didn't start shooting until we started shooting. Am I wrong about that? I believe people don't typically jump through the windows and try and keep pace with a train when they're trying to have a nice parlay. I mean, that that was a train riding not on rails? Who knows? Chuck, I'm just... Chuck. Chuck. Yeah, Daisy. You told me not to shoot until they started shooting. Well, that was... But... Wait, is that... I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't think this is going to end up bad at all. And if it does, that's egg on my face. Chuck, no one shot. Right. No, we're going to the place where they might start shooting at us. I'm bored, Chuck. Yep, we're, we're heading we to go? this. Yep, we're heading that way now. I don't like you guys fighting. It makes me sad. Oh, we're not fighting, Daisy. This is just a, a grown-up disagreement. It sounds a little bit like fighting because we're all very um, passionate about our stances. But in the end, we're all friends. Right, everybody? <laughs> you, you owe me, Chuck. Because if I don't get my bar back and I don't find the song bitch that did it, it'll be you who pays. Me I'm or the old. ferryman, it'll be you who pays, Chuck. I'm and that's that. Oh, okay. Maybe this was a fight. All right. Uh,. Yeah. You, you, you signed us up to do some killing for people that could kill us back. You didn't I, You didn't have to agree. I could have gotten the information and then shared it with you, and I would have been the only one on the hook. So that we're in the dark when they come in the night to take you away. <laughs> oh, that I'll won't protect happen. Chuck. I got him. You should stick close to that one who's dangerous. 
But oh my goodness. Chuck's my friend. People, I've seen people run their mouth, but there's usually a lot more liquor involved. And I then pull out the flask and begin to drink because my god, a stupor is exactly what I need right now. Like that would be the, the vibe. It's like, oh my goodness. All right. So as you guys are having this conversation and making your way through Shanfan over to a district called the Skids. And it's pretty obvious why it's called the Skids because I mean, if the rest of the town was a shithole, the skids is the very bottom of that latrine. Um, <clears throat> and while we're going, I'm going to ask Anders what roof rabbit is. Uh, cat. I like kitty oh, cats. They eat, they eat cats. Hmm. Not yep. as much meat as you would think. Uh, trying to get at your horse. Just another critter. I mean, horse meat's delicious. Too stringy. You haven't had it cooked properly. You gotta stew it. Mm. Okay. And uh, as you guys approach oh, the street. Oh. oh, hey, Doc Tilly's here. Oh. She's not Hi, Dr. T- oh. <laughs> um, there you see four guys standing outside of a building that has no windows, is stone. And all four of these guys look like your typical toughs. And as you guys are approaching, go ahead and give me a notice check. All right, got the critical fail out of the way. Let's do this. What are we doing? I'm sorry. Notice. Notice. Mm-hmm. All right. Goodman's coming in at a three. Charles at a four. Cheryl privately rolled some dice. Seven. Oh. And Daisy at a five. So I was just trying to look uh, sneaky. Goodman is going to spend a Benny. No, I'm I'm distracted. Okay. Uh, You guys noticed them. And as soon as they see you guys they immediately take a threatening pose. Almost like they know that a bunch of white folk in this part of town is nothing but trouble. And uh, as everybody gears up for the fight, that is where we'll pick up next time. Can you believe it? Two episodes without a single fight. I mean, it happens. I'm excited. I'm loving the role playing. I mean, there was kind of a fight. Mm. I I feel bad because like I I do tend to like get really like wound up in that, but like I didn't <laughs> want that to feel like that was like coming from a place of anger. Because <laughs> like I feel like mommy like, and daddy are going to you for your character. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for watching and or listening, everyone. And remember, if you want some amazing coffee, check out our sponsor, PoppetsCoffee.com. Um, also, if you want to help us out on the Patreon, there is now shirts at the, one of the higher tiers and a few other items on there as well. So not only will you be supporting us, you'll get some amazing Knights of the Smith dinner table swag. So head on over to our Patreon and, uh, get your swag. Beyond that, we will see everybody next time. And thanks once again. Bye Bye, everybody. I'm probably not going to see you. I'm... Like this is a recording. I mean, yeah, <laughs> but you know we'll what hear I mean. Us next time, <laughs> come and join us next time. We'll go and have a good time. But like, I'm not gonna see you. I don't want to creep you out or anything like that. Kind of like weird parasocial stuff. It's like I'm not looking at you. I promise. I'm not living in your walls. Just stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> have a good one, folks. Bye bye.
This actual play podcast references the Savage Worlds game system and the Deadlands Weird West Savage setting, both of which are available from Pinnacle Entertainment Group at www.peginc.com. It is unofficial media content permitted under the Media Network Consent Agreement. This content is not managed, approved, or endorsed by Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Certain portions of the materials used are the intellectual property of Pinnacle, and all rights are reserved. Savage Worlds, all related settings, and unique characters, locations, logos and trademarks are all copyright of Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Tales from the Deadlands, Knights of the Smith Dinner Table, and all of its logos are property of Knightsmith Games, LLC. For more information, head to www.knightsofthesmithdinnertable.com.